Hello and welcome back and that is right today we're going to do another quick form comparison and today we are looking at this the F243 from Terramaster and we're comparing it against the TS253E from QNAP. I'm going to give you five reasons why you might want to opt for the QNAP and five reasons why you might want to opt for the Terramaster and I'm going to do it as quickly as possible. So straight away with the Terramaster, first thing, it's very, very important. If you watch my other comparisons, you'll know this, but still nonetheless, it's by far the better value. Not just of these two, but when it comes to two bay NAS devices in 2022, 2023 ranges, it is a country mile ahead of everyone else. Notwithstanding, it's an Intel powered system with four gig of memory, 2.5 GPU ready by default. It arrives at a price point in some cases is 100 to 180 a nicker difference for a two bay which is money that you could be spending on larger capacity drives not only is the base level price more affordable it is also regularly on offer during amazon prime day and during black friday multiple different retailers will sell this device for as much as 20 percent even less so what i'm saying is if you really are caring about the bottom dollar and which one is the better value for money in terms of hardware it's very hard to argue with the f2 being the better choice there because it just simply is the lower price point between the two of them but it's not all about money it's not all about that money what about the, um, the QNAP there? The QNAP arrives with just a better software platform. It's not all about hardware. And QTS, running on the TS253E, is by a country mile the better software between them. TOS 5 on the Terramaster is very, very good, but it's still not quite as evolved as that of that QNAP there. The QNAP software uh, arriving with a multitude of different applications and services. It arrives with a multitude of different client apps that we'll talk about later on and different services supported in the third and first party. But the priority there, at least between these two, is that first party. There are just more and more innovative first party applications on the QNAP. And although more have been added in TOS 5, the QNAP just wins by a substantial margin by comparison there. But it doesn't have all the services and there are things that this device has that the QNAP doesn't and in particular there are two very specific um, software and storage services that are not available on the QNAP but are available on this Terramaster and weirdly on the, Q uh, on the Synology platform as well and they are a fluid RAID system in the form of T-RAID that allows you to mix and match drives very very easily which is something the QNAP still doesn't have only supporting traditional RAID. Fluid RAID systems, although they don't seem particularly useful in a two bay, once you start adding expansions or need to mix and match larger drives, it can get more interesting. Whereas traditional RAID will cap every single drive in a RAID group with the lowest available drive regardless of their size. Fluid RAID systems like T-RAID and Synology's Hybrid RAID will allow you to uh, use larger drives and it will calculate internally an area of redundancy equal to the largest drive available. So once you start integrating larger drives down the line and more drives by using expansions, T-RAID will allow you to expand a great deal easier. The other storage service it has that isn't available on the QNAP is support of BTRFS, the Butter File System. And that is something with the choice between EXT4 and BTRFS results in, with BTRFS at least, the faster snapshot creation with lower system impact and file self-healing in the same way that you might find comparable to that of uh, memory with ECC memory, um, consistent file checks within BTRFS can um, silently repair data is written to the system thanks to uh, a, a right parity in the background being created within BTRFS, something the QNAP sticking with the EXT4 doesn't have to the same degree. But what does the QNAP have there? I'll tell you one thing it uh, damn well does have, and that is eight gig of memory by default. The system arrives with eight gigs straight off the bat. Unlike the four gig that the Terramaster arrives with the DDR4, this is eight gig straight away. Yes, you're paying a little bit more for it, but eight gig straight off the bat with that Intel Quad Core CPU is going to be tremendously useful there. That eight gig results in the system being able to run more VMs, allows the system to run more cameras, and ultimately having eight gig, although not expandable, is still going to be very, very useful indeed within that system. But talking about memory, even though it has that eight gig, I just touched on it there, it's not as upgradable as the memory inside the Terramaster. Well, the Terramaster arrived with that four gig, but they say uh, officially supported up to 32 gig of memory. Now, this is despite the fact that CPU is recommended at 16 gig. They're saying if you use their memory modules, you can get it to 32 gig. Not only will you see it, but you'll be able to use all 32 gig as well. That combined with the CPU inside this device being the M5105, although both of these systems are running Celeron based processors, the Terramaster has got a better CPU overall on points. That CPU benchmark points, just generally in terms of overall clock speed and graphical handling, just a margin of extra, it allows it to just stay that little bit ahead with those onboard hardware resources there. But back to the QNAP. The QNAP 
has a much better KVM keyboard video mouse setup, even though both of them arrive with an HDMI output there on the rear. This uh, QNAP here, the 253E, arrives with HD station, a completely parallel graphical user interface accessible over HDMI by connecting a big TV and controlling it with a keyboard and a mouse, controlling it with an uh, infrared remote control, controlling it with a Bluetooth uh, USB dongle controller or, you know, mouse and keyboard and stuff or using a network remote control like their very own Q remote or third party network remote controls that allows you to enjoy multimedia and allows you to enjoy a virtual machine locally. It allows you to enjoy Plex, it allows you to use it as a surveillance station or again any multitude of those VMs I just mentioned there. All of this running simultaneously with the QTS software and services running in the background for all your RAID or your different apps all of those running at the same time parallel, not closing one off from the other. There's just a huge degree of first and third party services that you can run both locally via that KVM output and on the network and remotely. It's just a huge degree of access with the TerraMaster only allowing you command level access via that HDMI. There isn't a graphical user interface to speak of, but I mentioned the HDMI output of this device because there is another feature we should talk about there. And that is that both of these systems can have TrueNAS installed on them. You can install TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Scale on them. Although it's not officially supported by either brand and they kind of frown on it and it may invalidate your warranty, both of them allow you to do that and allow you to take advantage of the ZFS based um, um, uh, uh, TrueNAS uh, platform or if you don't want to use the free BSD version, use the Linux Scale version. Both of them allow you to buy a turnkey solution like these and turn them into true NAS with the open source software. However, the upgrade path is just easier on the, uh, the TerraMaster. Uh, the original initialization runs from a USB internally, which you can pop out, replace with another one, and then you can put true NAS on this system. It is possible on the QN out there, but it requires a little bit more work because the system runs from an internal soldered uh, flash module, a five gig, five gig module internally which I wouldn't recommend you overwrite. And it just is a little bit more of a finickety process, whereas on the TerraMaster, it will allow you to have a base, true NAS level access to all of the available hardware, including those M2 NVMe slots inside, which I'm sure are listed on screen with the hardware. But at the same time, you keep the USB if you want to revert it back to the true NAS scheme, just by popping those inside there. You can even put fresh drives in, mix and match the drives and flip back to TerraMaster's own TOS uh, system and that storage very, very easily. It cannot be underestimated just how easy it is to put true NAS on a TerraMaster system. But what if you don't want to dick around with true NAS? What about those software and services? You're buying this as a combined hardware software solution. What is it that QNAT's bringing to the party that makes it so, so special? One of those big standouts is their surveillance platform, QVR Pro. This system arrives with eight camera licenses and arrives with support of AI-related services if you want to install that Google TPU module or use the integrated graphics seller on CPU for some low-level AI support within that surveillance platform. There's a multitude of different uh, client applications available for iOS and Android, as well as desktop applications um, for you know Windows and such, and Linux as well. On top of that, you've got that KVM support to create a localized surveillance station with a camera feed, huge degree of controls uh, with reduced alerts and notifications, and just more applications and services, as well as support of third party um, IP devices like IP locks, IP doors, and IP speakers all built in there. It's just a great surveillance platform. And again, eight camera licenses included. And although there is a surveillance tool available for the TOS TerraMaster platform, it is nowhere near as evolved as that of the QNAP platform there. But alternatively, on the TerraMaster, there is isolation mode. On that system, within the system settings, there is a single tick box option where at the click of a button, you can disable all remote level access. It disables all SSH telnet services, disables all third party applications, disables all web-based PHP level access. It effectively disables it, regardless of, you know, you could try and pull the cable, but things might go wrong, you get a bunch of alerts. Clicking that button will safely disconnect from all of those services and you can't turn them back on without rebooting the system, which is great if you're slightly worried about a potential attack and you want to be 100% certain that you've severed them all, you can do that there. Now the QNAP can do all of those things. You can manually turn a lot of them off and you can turn off quite a lot of them quite quickly, but there's no one click option. And yes, I'm sure some of you will say you can just rip the LAN cable out the back if you choose, but again, then there'll be system alerts. There will be things within the system that may be reactive to that that you will have to undo. And it will just be so much more convenient to just have a click 
sever all done so again that isolation mode doesn't get anywhere near the credit i think it deserves now so going back to the QNAP there, it's worth highlighting again, all of those client tools there. This system allows you to install a bunch of different client tools and applications uh, on your local client systems, not just for surveillance, but a whole myriad of services from multimedia to office-based ones to mail to, uh, again, um, uh, uh, kind of patching in all those multimedia tools and tools that allow you to bridge other third-party tools on your client devices from mobile to desktop. And... As well, although both of these platforms have done a lot of work uh, investing money in their own software, arguably QNAP or TerraMaster, QNAP have gone the extra mile to produce applications and services for a bunch of other third-party app centers out there, alongside QNAP Club, the homebrew app uh, uh, platform there, that although those applications are not QNAP certified for the most part, they, it does allow a greater homebrew community and just a greater depth of applications for both client services and to be installed directly on the NAS and enjoyed via HDMI as well than you would find on that TerraMaster at all. With the TerraMaster, you're kind of reliant more on, on those third-party services that TerraMaster will go use them, but it's up to you, buddy. Finally, talking of software services, if we are going to talk about third party, one of the reasons a lot of you are going to be looking at these two services is going to be Plex Media Server. And when it comes to Plex Media Server running on both these devices, I can tell you right now that despite the more powerful CPU inside the TerraMaster, Plex Media Server just seemingly ran a great deal better on the 253E. It just seemed to have a better running there, it was more efficient, and was just better at handling the onboard hardware overall. And although both of these do a very good job of using integrated graphics to play and transcode 4K multimedia with Plex Media Server relying on client side, uh, sorry, uh, server side transcoding, when it comes to both of these two devices, Plex Media Server just seemingly ran better on that QNAP. And I think a lot of that is to do with the tightening a lot of the nuts and bolts within the QNAP platform, even when utilizing those third-party applications. But this has been comparing the F243 from TerraMaster and the TS252E from QNAP. And we've got that rolled in at just under 12 minutes there. And overall, between these two, if I had to make a recommendation, it comes down to hardware versus software. And although the hardware is very, very good on both of them, the CPU is greater, the memory is greater on this, and just generally the system, if you're going to be using your own third-party apps and you have no interest in using the first-party services, then the TerraMaster at its value point makes it unbeatable for a number of you, whereas on the QNAP, the QNAP does have that great software back in. It still has that great hardware as well, although arguably you're paying a little bit more for that fix, that gig memory as well. Between the two of them, it's a much better combined hardware-software solution from the, uh, the QNAP than it is on the TerraMaster. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have and you need help with your NAS purchase, Use the free advice section over on NAS Compares or use the free community support forum on Ask NAS Compares. If this video has helped you and if you were going to buy from Amazon anyway, use the links in the description to take you to Amazon. It will genuinely help us because although it won't cost you anything, anything you buy after going through that link will result in a kickback coming back here to NAS Compares as Amazon Associates and it helps us carry on doing what we do. Other than that, if you need any help, head to the comments for links to reviews and guides on all of the products mentioned today. And other than that, I hope you have a great week.